Driving it home with Patty Vasquez, Patty Vasquez. From global conflicts to greenhouse gases, the folks refusing to wear masks says, and politicians getting caught grabbing asses says, she's driving it home with Patty Vasquez. Holy cats, everybody. We are in the home stretch, and I want to tell you, first of all, thank you for joining us as we drive it home. I am your host, Patty Vasquez. <laughs> joining me in studio is author, historian, and you may have seen him today on WGN Daytime. It's Adam Selzer in studio. I am a television star. You are a television star. I demand to be treated like one. <laughs> he was on the radio yesterday. He's all over the place. And then we drove up, after he appeared on WGN, we drove up to Kenosha, Wisconsin, first yep. for a, fan, I mean, folks, Frank's Diner. Jeez. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, that is an institution. So good. long may it rain. And super, cu- they were so cute. They all They're so nice in there. They really are. They all dress up as Hooters girls, <laughs> Lady B. Uh, the men and the women all had Hooters uh, like shorts and shirts, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I, we enjoyed chili cheddar omelets. Before we headed out to the doors, those are delicious chili cheddar omelets. So good, and then uh, and I feel like I'm still stuffed from when we ate there a few days ago. <laughs> honestly, I mean the, the half, the, like the the garbage dump plates they bring out. I, I ordered the half. They literally called that, by the way. That's yeah, actually that's called, what it's called the garbage, garbage plate. The garbage yeah. plate. It is, you know, it's a pile of breakfast foods. I got the half, and like this is half of what? <laughs> like, I feel like Gaston here it eating five dozen eggs every morning. Yes, you noticed that I did not. I, I had just a. I had a salmon omelet, which was tasty too. I never yeah. know what to expect with the salmon. So yeah. sort of a choice, and it was right. Fantastic. It's where, um, I, I, I'm always leery about getting seafood in the Midwest. Honestly, I think it was canned salmon. Yeah, it's it usually it was, probably yeah, is kind of like tuna, like a tuna omelet yeah. would be the same thing. So we, uh, but we also decided we would have uh, perhaps a, an apple cider mimosa. Yeah, that sounded like a nice little uh, refreshing thing. We didn't imagine it was going to be a gobble the size of our head. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so if you go to my uh, t- uh, to my TikTok or to Adam's, uh, I believe, where, where did you post yours? Uh, mine is on my Instagram. On your Instagram. On so the Adam Selzer Instagram. So follow Adam. You can see a, a photo of the uh, goblets of cider with salt caramel whiskey that we enjoyed. Yes. Uh, and we walked that off. We did a little bit because uh, we didn't want to get in the doors too early. We were in uh, Kenosha by about 11. Mm-hmm. Uh, we decided to uh, take a walk. We went to one of their secondhand stores that was fantastic. Oh yeah, I got a cute little ring for five bucks. Yeah, I got I got my wife a vintage Epcot Center button. There you go. And then we picked up our literature, meaning the campaign information for the races in Wisconsin, including uh, Cong- the race for Congress. Uh, Peter Barca. We also talked about. Uh, we have information on, on Tammy Baldwin, of course, Vice President Harris, and uh, Governor Walls. And we had we had, you know it's funny, Adam. We are one of some of the few door knockers uh, in Wisconsin during the weekdays. Yeah, but uh, I think we have as much. Success I would talking say we to have voters. at least as much success actually getting people coming to the door. Yeah, almost more. We talked to a, a nurse, you guys, who was when we she talked when we talked to her, mm-hmm. we explained why it was so important to vote early. She decided to vote right away. She was getting in her car, yeah. and uh, we dropped a lawn sign for her, and uh, it was it was fantastic. We, we've actually talked to more undecideds for sure yes. in the last couple of days. Which is, I try not to be, I, I try not to get frustrated. Yeah. Whatever. Like, hey, meet people where they are, right? Right, right. Yeah. Most people just aren't paying attention to this stuff as much as, as we are. If you're, if you're listening to this program, you're probably more tuned into what's going on than people who just pick up stuff a little bit here and there. Exactly. Yeah. There was uh, one guy who said probably. And uh, as, and I, hey, look, we don't have enough time to find out everyone's why of yeah. why they haven't come to a, to a It's know, probably decision. going to be something silly anyway. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, especially. Like, well, when she went to that record store, she bought 1970s Mingus. <laughs> and I feel like if you're listening to the 1970s Mingus, not, you know, Mingus uh, um, or, you know, the early stuff, you know, that stuff in the 70s is kind of a mess. Yeah. It's, you know, that new thing version of jazz. If she's listening to the 1970s Mingus in the Oval Office, what kind of chaos is this going to create? <laughs> Uh, I would say, too, uh, that uh, the kids were starting to go trick-or-treating, so we had to wrap up, one, to get here on time, but also right. not to we, confuse people. people. Think we were trick-or-treating. Exactly. Uh, I do think, uh, I think I, we could both agree that the scariest lawn decorations we saw were the Trump signs. Uh, for sure. Yeah. It's a, it was a lot going on there. So speaking of which, uh, let's do a little bit of Halloween, since you are our expert sure. on the uh, ghostly uh, locations throughout Chicago. And you have, tonight, people, don't, you, go, you don't even have to leave your home to go on a haunted 
tour with Adam. Right. Tonight at 8 o'clock, I will be doing a virtual ghost tour. You can just log into the Mysterious Chicago Facebook page or go to AdamChicago.com and gorge on the particulars. But it's, <laughs> it's free to log in. It's free to watch, free to join in the conversation. We'll all have a good time just hanging out. It'll be a fun time for everybody. It's I've, I've always done my virtual tours on just a free donations if you feel like it basis, and that's done enough to keep me afloat. Mm-hmm. So the fun thing about a virtual tour is we're not bound by space or time. I can go to locations on the same virtual tour that I could never really do in if we were on a bus. It would take too long to get from point A to point B. Right. Yeah, I, it's fantastic, you guys. You've got to check it out, MysteriousChicago.com. Find Adam on uh, Facebook, um, Mysterious Chicago on Facebook as well. Yeah, Mysterious Chicago, or Adam Chicago is easier to remember. Adam so Chicago. Adam Chicago, and uh, you can join the tour, as he said, for free. Uh, it's a great way to spend your evening if you you know maybe want to be following along what's going on in the news. Take a break. and uh, yeah, Just take a break, pour yourself a drink, pour yourself all the drinks you feel like. Exactly. You know, you're, you're at home. If you puke, you do it on your own. It's Yikes. no skin off of my back. So I don't, you won't. <laughs> You won't bother the other passengers. There's no cleanup for me to do anyway. Have you so, had Have you had tours where people get over and dull over um, some alcohol? When I worked with one of my older companies, yeah, that was a big problem. Oh, that there was a pub stop in the middle of it, and people would show up already pre gaming and drinking their way through it, and unable to handle such things. Yikes. People puked in the bushes at various stops. There was There was one place where I would like point people, okay, the bathroom's over there, but you have to take your purse with you. And so. <laughs> We, you know, these like Chicago party ant types would show up quite a bit. Oh, how funny. I actually like that animated well, I love, I love the show. I don't want her on my ghost tour bus. That's fair. Chicago Party Ant is a, a, a series, an animated series on Netflix, by the way, mm. if folks want to know what we're talking about. Adam uh, leads these tours, and uh, I, I, it's really about the mysteries, as you talk it's, about. It's, it's the, about the history to me. Yeah, the you history know, and the mystery. Yeah, the history the mystery. You know what I'll, what I'll do with it, a supposedly haunted location, I'll tell the whole history of it, and then I'll say what people have seen there, what they say they have seen there. Right. I don't necessarily vouch for it, but I, I know when people are just telling me what they think I want to hear. I'm not going to repeat that if you just like make up something about, well, we think there was an Indian burial ground here, or the, the woman hanged herself from the ceiling, and now a woman in white shows up. And, you know, all, all these things that you, you saw that on television or something, you're just repeating what you think I want. Um, I'll tell you, the place that I've probably got the most consistently interesting stories is the women's bathroom at the Lion house at the zoo. I, I do the Lincoln Park Zoo Haunted History Tours Tuesdays and Wednesdays. The last one for the year was last night. And the cleaning crew will only go into that place in pairs. Really? One time, apparently, one of them had like an unseen hand threw a bottle of Windex across the room. And that's one of the stories I can repeat, because usually when they're telling me these stories, it's the people who were the last one there after the, everything had closed. And it's stuff that happens while they're using the bathroom. I was like, how, how detailed do you want me to get into the story where you're, you're pooping the right. whole time, yikes, you know? Yikes. <laughs> well, you know, they remodeled that bathroom. Yes, and the, the, it has not changed the stories. Really? As I understand from the staff. And, and sometimes, you know, in these, uh, you know, ghost storytelling and movies and things like that, they'll say, if, if you do any sort of remodeling, sometimes that also... Right, we, we do notice that more consistently we get more stories. Maybe it stirs something up. Maybe you're just in there more so you notice more. Exactly. Or maybe there's more things falling around than making noise, which, you know, if you're not prepared for it to turn out to be something else, just stay out of it. I don't know why they had... I, don't, I didn't think that the bathrooms were that bad down there. I kind of like the old... Fa- they, I, I love the old style. Yeah. Of it. We don't know what might be haunting it either. I mean, there's any number of options. You got the old city cemetery was nearby, a bridge they used to call suicide side bridge was very close by. Um, one thing I found when they first built a bathroom in Lincoln Park, this was like in the 1800s, it was still a new enough concept having a public bathroom. They called it the Men's and Ladies Comfort Station. Oh. But it was in the, it made, it made a couple of architectural di- uh, magazines, and one of them mentioned there would be two attendants in this bathroom. One would be a man who would be paid $55 a month. The other was a woman who would be paid $50 a month. Oh. So you want to know who I think might be haunting the place? <laughs> The underpaid woman. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And there are still bodies in the area because Lincoln Park uh, Cemetery. Lincoln, Lincoln Park was the city cemetery for about about eight, early 1840s to about the mid 1860s, and they spent about a decade theoretically trying to move everybody when they moved everybody to Graceland and Rose Hill Cemetery. But by then, for one thing. 
it's very wet, marshy soil. After five or ten years, there probably wasn't a lot left to find if you even knew where to dig. Um, when they do find something that's actually intact, the biggest surprise is just that the coffin is still intact. Right. So most of the time, there would be maybe coffin nails is all you're going to find. Wow. And I, I guess I, I was at a, a funeral recently, and the there was information, identifying inter- information on the coffin, presumably Ooh. because who knows down the road if they have to move the cemeteries again. They want to be able to connect families with their Right. You know, a lot of times the coffin plate's all that's going to be left. And right. that, that's something like at, at Trinity Churchyard in New York, there's like 90 brick vaults underneath Trinity Church. And a few of them have had to be moved in the last half century or so. And they built a new wing. They moved everything over to a new place. And when they went inside, they found really just like wood and coffin plates. Right. And unfortunately, some of the coffin plates weren't even legible anymore. They were worn enough by now. So it's not like they've ever had very good data about who's in any given vault anyway. Yikes. And I, I would think that I, you've mentioned before that the folks at Graceland don't necessarily like the, the ghost to like the ghostly versions of. Is, is right. It? You know, they, well, it, it, various cemeteries, that's not something they really want to focus on. And I think I think they got to know it comes with the territory. Even when these fo- cemeteries were founded, they had to know that there would eventually be ghost stories here. That's right. just how cemeteries work. But it's, it's not something that they necessarily want to focus on. Uh, certain ones, they'll kind of treat it as a running joke. Have you ever heard any of the uh, sort of... Uh, uh you know, old wives, things that you're supposed to do when you drive past a cemetery. Because when I was a when I was a Girl Scout, when I was talking about uh, you know when we go door knocking, and I tell folks why I have this affinity for Wisconsin, mm. we would hold our breath and hold our belly buttons uh, when we drove past. The cemeteries. Belly buttons, a new one for Is that me. A new one but for you, the, yeah. We, my, my brother and I would always hold our breath. Okay. There was one cemetery we would drive past pretty regularly that we got to. Uh, if we were going by the short way on the side of it, we got eventually hold our breaths enough. But if you were going by the opposite direction, the long way i don't think i could do it even now <laughs> but we, we, we'll have to go to des moines and find out <laughs> there you go put it to the test we are hanging out in studio with author a historian a tour guide adam selzer you can go to mysteri- adamchicago.com adamchicago.com and uh and i know that uh, his books are all available uh wherever you buy books but yeah wherever you order your books where do you prefer to send people um, there are various like indie bookshops that can order stuff. If you want to just go to the Bezos Boutique, that's usually the easiest thing. I understand that. <laughs> Adam Selzer has over 25 books available. He's uh, working on his uh, sequel to the Graceland Cemetery uh, the, book. What's the name of it? Uh, Graceland Cemetery, Chicago's Stories, Symbols, and Secrets. Ooh. And we're, we're just... Early days starting on volume two. Excellent. And uh, while well, he, he he takes folks to uh, mausoleums, uh, crypts, and tombstones by day and at night, uh, he also goes door knocking with me in uh, Kenosha, Racine, and Elkhorn. Those are the three communities that Adam and I have been to. Tomorrow, uh, I will be door. I'm going to start door knocking in the uh, later after uh, later morning, probably around eleven or so, in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. I'm meeting up with some friends at Frank's Diner at uh, around ten o'clock. So if you want to meet me there. Uh, I will be at Frank's Diner in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and uh, heading to their office, however. Their volunteer office does not open until 1230, uh, so we won't be able to get to that too much turf. I have uh, some doors to knock before then, but if you want to come meet us up in Kenosha, uh, and then I'm going to be bouncing around. I'm going to be heading to uh, Racine, uh, Elkhorn, and Janesville over the next uh, four days because I will be staying. I'm going to be entrenched in Wisconsin tomorrow. Dwayne Kennedy will be filling in for me along with Adam Burke, uh, so... That's our programming notes for right. today and tomorrow and the rest of the weekend. 773-763-9278. That's the number to call or text to join our conversation. Again, 773-763-9278. Hey, today, by the way, is the last day to submit your uh, pumpkin, your pumpkin submission. Tell us again. If you have, uh, if you want to join our, our contest, because David Hochberg is giving away some gift cards. It only happens every four years, a presidential election year on a, a Halloween. Wait, Halloween? Presidential election year Halloween. And with an orange pumpkin running on the Republican side, we're encouraging listeners to paint their pumpkins to show their support for Kamala Harris, Governor Walls, and the Democrats. Team Hawkbird is generally generously providing $1,000 worth of Visa gift cards for the three best photo submissions with a $500 first prize. The deadline is midnight tonight. Prizes will be awarded next Thursday on my show between 5 and 7. So you have until midnight tonight. Take a picture of your pumpkins, whatever you got. You can show your uh, your uh, support for a blue wave or whatever uh, ghostly, spooky, fun pumpkins you have. So if you want to enter the contest, take a picture of your painted or carved pumpkin and submit it to heartlandsignal.com slash paint dash your dash. Wait, what is all this? Hold on a second. Heartlandsignal.com slash paint dash your 
underscore dash. Okay, this is too many dashes. Whoever wrote this for me, Andy, <laughs> go to Heartland Signal. Listen to this. Dot com slash paint dash your dash pumpkin dash contest. You'll figure it out. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you'd like to have us text you that link, text us at 773-763-9278. All right, I'm going to find the link. And I have someone sent a picture of their pumpkin to me yesterday. I'm going to send you the link to submit it to them and make sure you get your submission in by midnight tonight. 773-763-9278. That's the number to call or text us. And if you need the link to our contest, let me know and I'll get that up for you in just a moment on WCPT 820 Heartland Signal. Continuing our conversation with Adam Selzer when we come back. Stephanie Miller. It's another true Stephanie Miller show story, Chris LaVoy. Yeah, from uh, Wissness. Yeah, Jane in St. Charles, Illinois. It's real. Stephanie Miller fans are everywhere. We're meeting in parking lots. It happened just yesterday. I got to my car after leaving the grocery store. There was a woman loading her groceries in the car. She had a radio on to WCPT 820 Progressive Radio. I couldn't resist. They said, I think we would qualify to say that we listen to the Stephanie Miller show. We both laughed and said, yes, we would. I love it. Stephanie Miller. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 on WCPT 820. Hey, Google, play WCPT. Streaming Chicago's progressive talk from TuneIn. Hey there, it's your guy, Warren Price, from European and U.S. Collision Repair, a division of Technicraft Body Shops. We specialize in automobile and truck repair as well as normal automobile maintenance. With our highly skilled technicians and environmentally friendly materials, we strive for quality. Call 773-248-1200. That's 773-248-1200 or europeanus.com. You're listening to Driving It Home with Patty Vasquez on WCPT 820. Thank you so much for joining us as we continue to drive it home. Joining me in studio is author, historian, and tour guide, Adam Selzer. You can go to adamchicago.com to find out more about all the work that he does. And uh, today's, uh, it's been a Super Bowl season. Uh, it has, it has been a, an exhausting season because we're, we're, we're pairing the busy season that wears me out anyway with every spare minute we're driving to Wisconsin to knock on doors. Yeah. This is all hands on deck. It really is. And uh, I... I enjoyed taking a little a tour with you last Friday for Find a Grave Friday. Where are you going to do it from? You'll do it from here tomorrow. I haven't even thought of where I'm doing Find a Grave Friday yet for tomorrow's. Because some, some mornings tomorrow. I already know when I get up what cemetery I'm going to and what grave we're going to find. Others I'm sitting in that coffee shop at seven o'clock saying, "Let's see who what what obscure congressperson have I not looked up at Calvary Cemetery or something." I've got to send you something. There was a, when I was in line voting in Norwood Park. There was a, information about this family that had like tragedy after tragedy befall them including like the titanic and like murders like all this stuff yeah. or accidents and stuff i'll take a picture and, and I'm, uh, I'm guessing it's the hippox that sounds right I, ida, ida hippox she's a rose hill that family they were what, what they were they had lost a couple of children in the iroquois theater yes and yes, that's yes them. yeah and then they were on the titanic yes nine years later um there, there's an interesting thing i found uh, in the chicago evening american had ran an interview with them right after they got back that talked about how uh jj astor the fourth helped them escape from the titanic and he was like cracking jokes the whole time as he like they missed the lifeboats so we got them downstairs and out of a porthole like cracking jokes all the while and then of course the titanic won't sink and there is an urban legend that uh, Astor said, I asked for ice, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> And That's a great line. It's considered an urban legend, but frankly, the this article, which has like never been quoted anywhere in all the Titanic lit, uh, it was on my I put it on my Patreon a few weeks ago. But there's an, another thing that I don't know is widely known about them is that they were also swindled by H. H. Holmes. That family was? Yeah. Get and, out of and here. And there's Come not on. a ton of data about it, but in some of, you know, I've been through all of the H.H. H. Holmes, the Devil in the White City guy's paperwork. He got sued a lot, so there's a lot of paperwork. And one of them is listing all the people with claims against the Murder Castle building. And one of them is the Hippock Glass Company. Apparently, he bought a bunch of sheet glass from them and never paid for it, which Get was one of his here. favorite things to do. He did it with all the other sheet glass companies. So, That's incredible. So now, now I, I kind of feel like next time I'm in the legal archives, maybe I'll check uh, like if there's Hippoc versus um, 
some some one of his various companies or something. That is wild. Cause I, ju- I just, I mean, I lived in that neighborhood. I grew up over here, and I had never heard about this family. Yeah. And I can't believe I just saw it, and then like it, your st- the stories came out of your face. I'm like, this. Right. Yeah. There's also a, a house for sale in Norwood that was like one of the demo houses for the World's Fair at the end of the 1800s. Oh yeah. Uh, I'll show that to you before the end of, before we leave today. Okay. Um, Dan Schaefer is on the line. Dan Schaefer, Paul, host of Palatini and Tuesdays with Josie. You're on with me and Adam Selzer. What's going on, my friend? Hello, friends. Uh, I'm doing great. This is today is like my Christmas. It's my happy day. Uh, <laughs> I just fin- I just finished decorating the house. I haven't had a child cry yet, but the night's still young. So there, you be, you know. <laughs> there you go. Um, but I wanted to ask Adam. I, uh, two of my favorite cemeteries. I don't know if you guys talked about it already. I tuned in a little late, but Bachelor's Grove and Resurrection Cemetery oh, are two sure. of my. Cla- classic ghost story cemeteries in any case. Uh, Bachelor's Grove is yeah. in Midlothian. It's out in the middle of the Rubio Woods Forest Preserve. And we could call it abandoned. It hasn't really been used in a long time. But in recent years, it's been very much cleaned up. And in terms of visitors, especially this time of year, it probably gets more visitors per burial than any other cemetery in yeah. town. Um, what I always I sometimes tell people, you don't even really need to see ghosts there. The people that you meet at Bachelor's Grove are going to be weird enough. <laughs> Um, there's, to, always, there's always somebody there every time. Yeah, know, there's always somebody you're, you're there, exactly and often right, they're, they're, they're distinctly weird individuals. I've seen, like, grown men get in fights over whether it's a vortex or a portal out there. Oh, yeah, see, I'm not that type of a person. I just like yeah. to take pictures and right. wander the woods. But, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, Resurrection is also a favorite. We, My husband and I, as we're, well, it's mainly me, we had our wedding photos taken at Resurrection. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Really? Uh-huh. I it's love a really it. cool space. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, I, look, and I think that is the that is the world's largest stainless glass. I think that mausoleum is the world's largest stainless I've glass. I've heard stuff like that. It is a very large, uh, architecturally, it is the style I sometimes <laughs> refer to as Catholic disaster of the 1960s. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> but, actually, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, yeah but very large stained well, glass cool. in there, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And I'm going to look up your books. This, uh, I'm, I'm excited to read them. Oh, thanks. Yeah, check out I, Graceland Cemetery. And I have one I can lend you to. I have a, I have a couple. I have H.H. Holmes. I have, uh, I should probably get Banshee from you. I'm oh, yeah. An autographed copy yeah. of that. Yeah, I can lend you a couple of, uh, of my books as well. Griffin has the uh, Smart Alex Guide to History mm-hmm. that was sent to Griffin as a gift without the person knowing that Adam was a friend of mine, which just <laughs> cracked me up. I love I love that the, Adam gets the residuals. Totally right. Hey, I just got a check for that book, in fact. It was 10, <laughs> count them, $10. That's right, 10 <laughs> big ones. That's right. Dan, oh. tell me. Uh, well, you guys have a, yeah. Hold on. Hold on, my friend. First of all, okay. Dan will be okay. uh, all right. Dan Schaefer. That's time. okay. Dan Schaefer will be guest co-hosting with me next Thursday because I'm performing at the Laugh Factory that night. So he'll take over the second hour of my show. All right. Uh, so I'm, again, I'll be at the Laugh Factory. And uh, Dan, so tell me, did you, have you always been sort of drawn to cemeteries? Like, where did your fascination come from, do you think? Uh, my dad introduced me to horror movies when I was probably way too young, I was five years old. And ever since then, <laughs> horror movies. And then, you know, for me, it is there, there's the paranormal aspect of it, and uh-huh. whether you believe in it or not. But there's also, for me, also the historical aspect of it. Right. Like I, you guys were talking about the Iroquois Theater and the, like all of that stuff. It's like just learning about the things, you know, like Our Lady of the Angels Fire. Right. Like, why is that school haunted? Well, that's because there was a massive fire there. Though, like, you know, it's, mm. it's you know, it, it's the history aspect of it too. But yeah, but I, I mean, I'm I'm probably one of those crazy people that Adam was referring to. Right? Just go wander alone in the cemetery. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, we all um, do. I, yeah, it's those are my people. Yeah. I mean, during the pandemic, it was like walking into Cheers. We all knew each other. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> I'm a big fan of cemeteries. I, I, I actually, uh, like, I used to walk through St. Alphonsus on um, Milwaukee Avenue because it was between my house and the brown chicken I used to work at. So I used to wander through, in high school. I walked every day uh, to work there. And uh, and I just, whenever I travel, when I'm on the road, I find that I learn a lot about a community by their cemeteries. Sure. Yeah, I love doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So at any rate, I'm I like just, it. now we know we both love cemeteries. Good to know. Let's take a stroll. Let's take a stroll. I'll meet you at Bohemian Cemetery. Sounds good to me. That's a cool one, too. It it really is. Oh, yeah. Again, uh, Dan Schaefer, uh, the host of Tuesdays with Josie, wherever you find your podcast, and he'll be on the air with me next Thursday night. So make sure you're tuned in. Have a great rest of your show. Thank you so much, my friend. Take care. Let's uh, talk to you later. Talk to you later. Let's uh, take a break here. We're going to check in with uh, Karina Sachs, uh, one of the the young McHenry Dems, McHenry County Dems, and uh, find out how door knocking is 
and trick-or-treating is going up at her neck of the woods. In studio with Adam Selzer, go to adamchicago.com and register for tonight's cemetery tour. The t- the, what's the oh, name the, of it? The night is the virtual ghost tour. The virtual ghost virtual tour. Virtual ghost tour on the Mysterious Chicago Facebook page. There's also links to see it on YouTube or to see it on Twitch. You used to be able to play it on Twitter, but they've, they've throttled that if you're not paying Elon the 10 bucks a month. And I'm not, I'm not paying 10 bucks a month to an Austin Powers villain. And to uh, sign on to the tour, it's free. Uh, we do encourage you to leave a tip in the jar uh, that will be available there on the uh, site when you watch the show. Yeah. I love it. More in a moment with Karina Sachs from McHenry County Dems, Young Dems, uh, in just a moment. I love her more in a moment. Hey, Chicago. It's Randy Rhodes, and I'm back. And now you can listen to my show right here on WCPT, Monday through Friday, 7 and 9. WCPT 820, Chicago's progressive talk. I am so happy to be back on the air in Chicago. You know, this station and I go all the way back to the Air America days. But as Kamala says, we're not going back. We're moving forward, and we're doing it right here, right now on WCPT 820, weekdays, 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. WCPT 820, Chicago's progressive talk, where facts matter. There's no better way to defend democracy in front of your fascist Republican friends than with a cold progressive beer from the Monaco Brewing Company of Wisconsin. So head on over to Beer on the Wall in Schaumburg, Doty Liquors in Elmhurst, Captain Jack's Beverages in Worth, or the Wilmette Market to pick up a four-pack or a couple two-tree of MAGA Tears IPA today. Don't forget to drink and vote responsibly. And our good pal, Elmer 7th Ward Alderman Guido Nardini, is assisting Norma of Souls to the Polls in Wisconsin on Election Day and is going to check in with us on our uh, our, to our coverage on ele- Election Night. Uh, that's the 6th Ward, so I just want to give you a little bit of that information. And Peter Barca, candidate for Wisconsin's Congress, there in the, I think it's the third, with the, the places we're door knocking. We've been handing out his lit. Uh, he'll be joining us on Monday. So I uh, want to give, get you cut, caught up on that. And now joining us from McHenry County, our good friend Karina Sachs with the Young Dems. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing really good. How are you? And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Do you have a costume on currently? I do. I'm Wonder Woman. I just got home from work, and we all dressed up as superheroes for the kids. So I'm Wonder Woman today, and then I'm about to change into a witch, and then Oogie Boogie, and hit the streets with my kids. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Adam and I were door knocking in Kenosha today, and we uh, we knew we needed to stop, one, to come back for the show, but also there comes a point where people think that it's trick-or-treaters. So. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, yeah. Take how, a night off. Yeah, take, exactly. So tell us how things are going and what you want folks know about the races in McHenry County. Yeah, so, okay, so things are going really good. Um, we've door knocked almost every single door in McHenry County, which is phenomenal. We got our um, McVote brochures out, which um, is put out by the McHenry County Dems. Um, and like I said, they're almost to every single door, which is fantastic. Our um, Our voter scores are already up, and we're really hopeful for a great turnout. Um, and then, you know, we're all going through our poll watcher training right now because we have poll watching coming up here. So has, have there been any reports of intimidation? I'll, I'll tell you the polling place that I vote at on the northwest side of Chicago. They told me that last week they had to call the cops three times for people being disruptive and intimidation. Not that I've heard of. I've I've heard um, and seen some reports of rude election judges and some election election judge drama, but um, not so much like voter intimidation so far. Good, but. But we have been telling everyone to report it immediately. So, you know, hopefully they're not reporting it just to us and online and actually calling the numbers, um, which anybody can call. So even if you're like outside walking up to your polls and you see electioneering or someone threatening or being a nuisance, like that's a public number for everyone to call. Anything that's interfering with our right to vote. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, when, when I was in line to vote early, the, guy, the election judge handed over the folder to someone and said, this is so the boogeyman doesn't see who you voted for. Oh, dear. But here's the thing. The boogeyman already knows who you voted for. The boogeyman sees everything. There's no folder that will block things from the view of the boogeyman. Yeah, I love that they thought the, cart, like the, the thick paper might help. Yeah, uh, it's the boogeyman. What are so. some of the races that you guys uh, are most encouraged by the response you're getting from voters in your neck of the woods? 
um, our county board chair, which is um, Kelly Wagner. She's up running against a ridiculous man, Mike Bueller. Um, and it, things are looking pretty okay for her, and I'm really excited for that. I've been helping her campaign for the last two years. And then we have Chris Calipotis for coroner which is hitting home for a lot of people just, you know, coming right out of COVID and how our county did not do anything right. And our corner currently is a doofus. But anyways, um, those are the two that I'm most excited about. But we have a candidate on for every single county board seat for the first time in forever. And that's what I'm excited about is just to see how everyone fares because this is the first time we've had such a strong group of people up and filling every single seat. That's awesome. I, I love it. Fill every seat. I, I love yeah. it. And I want folks to visit the website, by the way. It's youngdemsmchenryco.com. That's youngdemsmchenryco.com for the Young Dems of McHenry County uh, website. And uh, Karina, let me ask you this uh, as far as uh, your trick or treaters. Have, have people been ring- kids been ringing the bell so far? I live in a townhome, so no. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but there's, I live in the back end of a subdivision, so on the front end, uh, where all the nice, big, lovely cookie-cutter homes are, they are all over there. And when I, when I was on my way home, you could see all the kids and everything and all the fun costumes. So, have, Did you have any favorites? How would you, how would you rate some of the uh, costumes this year? Oh, so far they've looked good. I I saw a few different versions of a scarecrow. My daughter is venturing out, and she's like some serial killer clown thing. Um, <laughs> oh, God. I, it's her own little hybrid. So, and then I I saw Sonic, like a Sonic the Hedgehog oh. guy walking around, and that one was actually kind of cool. <laughs> I saw a high schooler dressed as Wayne Campbell. I was like, how does a high schooler know who Wayne Campbell was at this point? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, so okay, for folks who need to know about early voting locations in McHenry County, where's the best place for them to get that info? So go to McHenryDems.org, and there's um, a tab at the top that says vote. And the McHenry County Democrats have put together an amazing page of voter information. It covers the referendums. Um, all the candidates, early voting places, anything that you need to know, how to report stuff and all of that. So org, and then click the tab vote. Excellent. And now uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you guys are getting a good vote, uh, you know, voter turnout so far. What are you, how, how do you respond to folks who say, I, I prefer to vote on the day of, it's my tradition? That's me. I am that person. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, I say as long as you're getting out to vote and if something happens, please let us know so we can help you get there. Um, that's the job of me as a PC is to make sure that my people are able to go to vote. Um, so if I have to give them a ride or, you know, whatever it may be, that's my job. Um, but as long as they get out to vote, I don't care where or when. I know a lot of people are championing the early vote. Um, which is absolutely fantastic, and I would just encourage people to still get their ballots in, but drop it off at the ballot boxes and don't mail them in. Agreed. I agree. I, I, I tell folks, the sooner they vote, especially because we can vote up until Monday, right, and then the day yeah. of, but in Wisconsin, like tomorrow, folks, in Wisconsin, tomorrow is your last day to vote early, uh, you know, just in case. it's not, I For me, I, I used to love doing the tradition, and it, well, once we get past this election, I might go back to that, but it also helps the volunteers focus their, uh, their energies and resources to reach out to voters who haven't voted yet. So that's what I, I tell folks. The sooner you vote, the sooner we uh, stop ringing your bell, texting, right. you, calling. You. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll cut off. Oh, yeah, you'll you'll cut off some of your messages. People light up <laughs> and, when you well, tell them absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, because like, so we just finished canvassing. We're officially done canvassing. We got the notice, I think, two days ago. Um, but now we're putting all of our efforts into chase the ballot and um, phone banking, which. You know, if you don't want to, like, we won't contact you if you voted. So there's an incentive right there to get out and vote early. And you don't have to hear from us. Exactly. We won't, we won't be bugging you anymore. Well, Karina, it's always great to talk to you. Uh, and I, I know it's Halloween, so get back to and enjoying your evening. Oh, before we go, what is your favorite? what is your favorite Halloween candy, by the way? 
Oh, Snickers, 100%. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, mine's, I do like an Almond Joy. I don't know why it makes me so happy. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh. I like the coconut, <laughs> and I do feel like a nut. Thanks, Karina. Again, folks, go to youngdemsmchenryco.com. That's youngdemsmchenryco.com. And uh, I'll talk to you. I know we'll be checking in with you uh, throughout the next week or so to find out how things are going. Thank you so much, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. And I hope to see everyone at the rally on Saturday oh, I'm from sorry. 12 to 2. Oh, please, let's share this information. That's what I was supposed to do, was, was update folks on the rally. Tell folks about the rally. That's no, that's okay. A, yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Um, so, Young Democrats of McHenry County, Young Democrats, or sorry, Young Illinoisans for Harris in McHenry County now have a We Won't Go Back rally in McHenry County on Route 14 in Crystal Lake this Saturday, November 2nd from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., and we want everyone and anyone, plus their mothers and brothers, to come out and just show your support um, and your allyship and uh, solidarity for all things human rights and women's rights and uh voting blue. So we have signs if you need one or you can bring one, but we hope to see a huge crowd. Outstanding. And uh, Larry from Wheeling asked, I'm not sure if I understand the question, Larry, I'm so sorry. Where is the vote button on your website for cell phones? I'm not sure if they're asking for, is, there's, is there a number to call? Oh, then, no, so on the cell phone, right, so he's searching on a cell phone, so there would be like the, the three little lines for the menu bar. You would click that, and then it would pop down, and it will say vote. Okay, great. So there you go. I hope you can find it, Larry. So the three bars on the menu. I, actually, I'm looking right now, and I don't see I don't see vote on the three bars. I've got home, about, by merge, elected officials, take action, news, events, contact groups, and members. Those are those are the those are the menu items. So is okay, it, is it for your for the local? Is he looking for a voting location? For home about take maybe take action. Oh, let's see if we're all <laughs> we're all looking at our phones. Looking. No, so you guys, you need to go to McHenryDems.org. You're okay. on the Young Democrats of McHenry County, so go to McHenryDems.org. Okay, excellent. Click the, click the three lines for the menu. It's in the top right hand corner. And there's a little thing right there that says vote. And I will send him the link right now. McHenryDems.org. Excellent. Thank you, Karina. Uh, have a Thank wonderful you. rally this weekend. Uh, enjoy the trick-or-treaters. And I, I adore the work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy holiday. Happy Halloween, everyone. At your, out in your neck of the woods. Uh, let's take a break. Oh, let's take a phone call from our friend uh, Jim, who's on hold. And then we'll check in with... Uh, um, with Jim. Hey, Jim, what's on your mind, my friend? I just had a miserable thought. I, if this could be the last legit Halloween, imagine if the Democrats don't prevail. Every day will be Halloween. And the not worst the fun Halloween, kind. Yeah, in the, worst, in the worst Halloween you could possibly imagine. We should never be in a position like this again. I only pray we're never, no kids, no old elderly, anybody should be in this position. We have to sweat this out. But I was what I called for, Penny, was uh, I was amazed yesterday. Uh, Senator Durbin was also equally amazed when he dedicated the first uh, complex to the blind, the first uh, apartment complex to the blind that was outfitted for the blind. And that's the first one in the United States history, apparently. Now, think of that. Hmm. It's 2024. We've had blind, blind people in the United States for centuries, and this is the first time we've addressed it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's an amazing fact. And just think about uh, Kamala Harris when she talks about addressing uh, uh, the, the uh, housing situation in the United States and expanding HUD and so on and so forth. This is such a dire election that we should never be in this position. We yeah. should never be in this position. But we're in it. And, Patty, I know you're working like mad. And, Adam, you're working like mad. <laughs> and, 
You guys have a great Halloween, and thanks for taking my call. Thank thanks, you. Jim. Happy Halloween, my friend. Let's take a break here. We're going to with our friend Ken Mejia Beal, who's going to be joining us on election night at the Bricklayers Hall in Elmhurst. Uh, make sure that you find out more about our event. You can go to Facebook.com events. Um, and uh, we'll go to our the WCPT Facebook page, and uh, you'll find more information there. And uh, th- there's a lot of numbers here. We had, I got to talk to somebody about our links. For <laughs> more in a moment on WCPT 820 Heartland Signal in studio with Adam Selzer, author, historian, and tour guide. You can sign up for his virtual tour for tonight. The ghost tour is at 8 o'clock. Go to adamchicago.com or find him on Facebook as well from Mysterious Chicago. This is WCPT 820, where facts matter. You're listening to Driving It Home with Patty Vasquez on WCPT 820. And as you heard from our ad right there, our promotion for our election night coverage, we will be joined that day by Ken Mejia Beal, who happens to be on the line with us right now, newly inducted to the Chicago <laughs> LGBT Hall of Fame. Ken, you're in, on the line with me in studio and Adam Selzer, author, historian, and a ghost tour guide. Uh, he's got a show tonight. Ken, I have a question for you. First of all, how are you doing, my friend? I am fantastic, and hello, Adam. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> hello. Good. Now, do you like ghost stories or scary movies and Halloween-type things? Oh, my God. I just was in New Orleans on a ghost tour. Uh, for the, it's called the Boo of Crew. No, the Crew <laughs> of Boo Parade uh, two weeks ago. I love I love everything haunted and scary and, and gory. It's my thing. All right. <laughs> nice. I, I, I was so sorry I wasn't able to go to New Orleans uh, in the last few weeks. I was hoping to go, so it sounds like you had a fantastic time. I know. I invited you. Yes, I know. I'm so sad. <laughs> I don't like you laughing too much because I couldn't go. No, it sounds like you had a fantastic time. You yes. missed a great time. <laughs> sorry. Mm. I hope, but do you no, know when you take a trip, like, I know, but but the thing is, I think it's it's great that you got to do that because we, of course, are heading in these last days of the election. Um, how yeah. are you feeling up in your neck of the woods in DuPage County? Um, uh, um, uh, no. <laughs> so I am cautiously optimistic. Okay. I'm, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. I am cautiously optimistic, but I'm starting to have some real bad PTSD from 2016. Right. So yes. It, it, every hour, it goes back and forth. Um, like two hours ago, I renewed my passport just in case. And it, so, yeah, to be very honest, I don't. I'm it, this hour. I'm cautiously optimistic. There you go. <laughs> you know what they call it? Uh, Dan Schaefer says what he's hearing a lot of in Wisconsin is nauseously optimistic. Uh, optimistic. That is exactly how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm excited that I get to spend election day uh, with you. I know that you'll be uh, joining. You'll, you'll be there the whole t- the whole eight to twelve I, hours. It sounds like I will be there the full twelve hours. I'm so excited that WCPT is is joining us. Uh, and you know, I, um, to make it quick, I, I really think election night in America is so much like Sunday mornings in America, which is never a good thing. And I want it. No, it's the worst. So I want it an election night party where Democrats of all walks of life can get together and we can be nauseous together and cry together, either happy tears or sad tears. I don't know yet. But, you know, not to bash anyone, but the, the few election night parties I've been to, especially in the suburbs, I look around and I'm the youngest person by 20 to 30 years. I'm the, the you know, the only person of color in the room. And uh, it's like, we got to do better. So that's why I'm so happy that we're all getting together and doing this. I'm excited about it. Now, folks, it is uh, you can you can register to join us on, for our election night party. Of course, it's Tuesday, November 5th from 2 yeah. to 10 p.m. is what we're inviting you for. It's at the Bricklayer and Allied Craft Workers, workers ADC1 of Illinois, which is at 660 North Industrial Drive. Again, that's that's basically their hall. Um, so it's, it's a, I saw the pictures of the venue. It looks fantastic, Ken. It's a great venue, and the bricklayers are one of my favorite unions. They are, hey, they're a fun crowd. I love Sean Allen, who is part of the bricklayers. He's also a union proud warrior. He's been a really good friend of mine for years, and 
they really do practice what they preach. I, I love our unions. I, I we wouldn't be anywhere without them. But the bricklayers are a special union to me. Now I I'm excited that I have to spend the day with you. I won't be spending the day with my fellow door knocker Adam Selzer because he is taking flight on Saturday <laughs> because he made his plans before Joe Biden uh, decided he would not run right. for re-election. So t- Adam, you basically oh. had an idea of possibly staying outside of the country. Well, there there was something I was <laughs> oh. joking a lot more about. Is I was, I was making the plan anyway. I'm going to go follow the Bob Dylan tour for a couple. Couple of weeks, and at the time awesome. it was going to be. I've, I've changed it to a couple of days earlier now, as I decided I didn't want to be over the ocean when they were counting the votes. I was going to fly out <laughs> on election night, and I would just I would have just driven myself insane. There's not enough sedatives uh, available in stores that I could take safely. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll be flying out on Saturday. I will be spending that night uh, in Edinburgh. So, but I, I had planned it before. Before I'm, I'm a lot more confident right now that I'm not going to be asking for a job at every bar that I go into. <laughs> and I still, I think Biden would have pulled it off through the Rust Belt states. Yeah, I, 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 I do think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it is amazing that Vice President Harris has been able to trick. Donald into dressing up and cosplaying like a McDonald's worker and a garbage man. Does does, Don, does he know that she has claimed many times that she used to be a shark diver? And I don't think it's even true. <laughs> it is. It is. Whoa. It is. Because I've heard that that she's been claiming that she's a shark diver and like goes <laughs> swimming around with sharks and. Yep. To put it on Twitter, Adam. That's the only place he pays attention. Anymore. Right. You have to. Yeah. yeah, and you have to AI a photo of her, right? Right. That, that's part of it. Is like, oh, it's, that's AI. That's not real. It's absolute. I mean, like, this is such. Like, did you ever think that silly season would look like this, Ken? No. In all of my life, I, I, I one of my favorite movies when I was younger was Idiocracy, and Mike never Judge. in my life did I think I would be living in Idiocracy, and here we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I just saw yeah. there's about to be a King of the Hill reboot on Hulu. And normally I would say, leave well enough alone, please. But if, it's, if it's Mike Judge, I trust the guy, you know? Sure. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, it, it has been, star- it is hard to wrap my mind around the fact that I think, was it Van Jones that put this the other day? He said that they're not taking the same test. He yeah. needs to be lawless yeah. no. and she has to be flawless. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Oh, I love it. Well, the, the standards are different and the expectations are different. And but the prize is the same, which is exactly what it's like to be a woman or a person of color in America. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty. I mean, this is a, a magnifying glass of exactly what folks go through every day. The test is different. The obstacles are different. But the prize is kind of the same, but not exactly. It, it's. Welcome to America, folks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that uh, there are all these, you know, commentators and there's all this polling information and things like that. I feel like we're probably all in the same boat where we're doing so much work while we you know, might pause and have some of those, that anxiety. Mm-hmm. I, I think that we are truly in for the first time in my life. I am aside from when I ran for office myself. And I know you've done this, Ken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm leaving it yeah. all in the field. I'm, right. I'm going to have no doubts on uh, November 6th that I, I could have. I mean, I, I, get I, will, I may feel like I could have stayed another two days in Wisconsin. <laughs> Maybe, but. But no, no. But this, this is why I, I've 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 eschewed doing tours that I could have sold out so I could have more time to go to Wisconsin. Yeah. I feel like we are just definitely. I, I I feel better about it. Yeah, you know, I feel better about Same. myself. Yeah, you too, Ken. Same. Yeah, I I've been to this election cycle. I've actually been to nineteen cities across the country to try to get out the vote, and I, I really don't. I know in my heart of hearts, I could not have done. Anything more than I have done this cycle. I could not have done anything more at all. Folks, and folks, look, we we know that it's different for everybody. You come to the the energy levels and the time and all those things. I I still, I want you guys, folks, if you have not voted yet, I've been encouraging Ken folks to vote as soon as possible because we are fortunate, right? We're fortunate enough in Illinois to have early voting all the way through Election Day. So you can still vote on Monday Uh, in Wisconsin. Their last day is tomorrow because whatever. Mm. I didn't even know Philly. I didn't know that Pennsylvania didn't even have early voting, only drop off mail ballots. It's crazy. Right. Folks, what, what, it's insane. And for I've been sharing my stories of why you should vote early. What what do you impress upon folks to encourage them to vote early? 
This is what I tell them. The the election day is not election day. It's the deadline. So yes, because people come up with mm-hmm. all kinds of weird excuses like, you know, my mom is sick. My dad is sick. The dog is sick. I'm sick. And my response is, have you been sick for the last 60 days? Yeah. Like, so you have to look at election day as the deadline. That is when it's due. But, you know, you have passed these polling places repeatedly over the course of, I don't know, the last 30 days or so. You had a moment to stop in. They're open on Saturday. Like, you had that moment. So you have made the option to give up your rights and your voice and your freedom. So now shut up for the next four years. You had had a moment. You cannot tell me you did not have 10 minutes over the last 30 days, six days a week, 7 a.m. to I think 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. You had 10 minutes. I refuse to believe that you didn't. The audience goes crazy. Yes. That's Ken Mejia Beal. Where do you want folks to learn more information about about yourself and about uh, anything else you want to promote right now before we let you go? Sure. So you can follow me at Ken Mejia Beal on Instagram, Facebook, um, uh, X or the Twitter or whatever. My whole goal is to really encourage marginalized folks to be a part of the process and to be a part of the America that we deserve. Yes. That's all I got. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ken, yeah. I look forward to seeing you and hanging out with you all day on Election Day. Again, folks, go to WCPT's Facebook wait. page and look for our event for the Election Night Party uh, featuring Ken Mejia Beal. Of course, Jonas Mazito will be hosting and, and Ken will be joining her uh, early in the yeah. show. We'll also have uh, Liz Chaplin for DuPage County Recorder. We'll have Representative Diane Blair Sherlock. Uh, we'll also have, there's somebody else, oh, uh, Anna Stava Mur- Representative Anna Stava Murray. Yeah. And uh, Candace for Clerk. All kinds of wonderful guests. Yeah. And of course, our friend at Union Proud Warrior, and thank you to uh, our friends at the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers ADC One. Thank you so much, Ken. Have a great Halloween. Oh wait, what's your you favorite? What, what's your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, Baby Ruth, Baby Ruth, Baby Ruth. Oh, yeah. that's a good, good one. I like that. All right, excellent. <laughs> that's easy. I would, I would pair that with a nice, uh, maybe a little Pinot Noir. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. See you soon. See you soon. Let's take a break here. Adam has to take I, off. I am going to be taking off. Patty has been great spending another day with you. I will see you tomorrow up in Wisconsin, up Wisconsin way for one more day of knocking doors. That's right. We'll be tomorrow. I think we're in Kenosha again. I uh, believe Kenosha. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. All and right. then we'll do whiskey and a cookie from there. So another another long day tomorrow, but it is going to be great. Well, uh, it's hard work is good work. Go to AdamChicago.com to register for his virtual tour starting in just two hours. Bye, everybody. Uh, go home and have some soup. Let's take a break here and we'll come back in just a moment on WC. CPT 820, Heartland Signal. You're listening to WCPT 820, because facts matter. Driving it home with Patty Vasquez, Patty Vasquez. From global conflicts to greenhouse gases, the folks refusing to wear masks, says. And politicians getting caught grabbing asses, says. She's driving it home with Patty Vasquez. Thank you so much for joining us to uh, drive it home. Uh, hello to our friends listening in Minneapolis, St. Paul, KTNF AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, and joining us uh, in the next half in the next half hour, not in this half hour, but the next one, we will be joined by Matt McNeil, host of the Matt McNeil Show, of course, a, a host on KTNF and uh, our evening host here on WCPT. So I look forward to catching up with him. Uh, we called him from the road uh, in Wisconsin after we got off our last door. And I'm just I'm I'm feeling as our friend Dan Schaefer from the Recombobulation area in Wisconsin says I am feeling nauseously optimistic. Let's see. Oh, so maybe other folks. I don't know how other po- folks' emotions are. Let's take our next call. Oh God, no! What? what? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, what, what's God, happening? No, this may be the last free Halloween we ever have. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it so, my friend. Yeah, you know, I I, I, I want to be optimistic, but be real optimistic eight years ago, and then that happened. And I'm sitting at dinner, and everybody was like, you know, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. You still think we were okay, people who were at dinner with me? You think so, Mom? You think so, friend of the family who I'm not going to name drop? You think that was okay? People, listen to me. I realize that some of you really like me and some of you find me very annoying. And I can understand both of those opinions. But I am begging you to listen to me. Please, please vote blue just this once. I don't care if you're a Republican. I really don't. 
but he is not a Republican. He doesn't care about you people. He cares about money and, and who, uh, lady, lady bits. That's it. And shilling water with his name on it. That's it. It's all that man cares about. He doesn't care about you. He cares about what's in the best interest for him. Okay? So please, if you want to vote for the Republican Party, do that in two years when you actually have a Republican Party again. Because this is not the Republican Party. You don't want to vote for this man because you will not have a country in eight days. Okay? This, this is it. Like, when Michelle Bachman got up there however many years ago it was and said, we're in our last days, oh, uh. whatever the heck she said. Stephanie Miller plays it all the time. This time, she's not kidding. This is it. This is do or die. Please, vote blue. You can hate Democrats for the rest of your life. Don't do this. I'm begging you, do not do this, because we will not survive this. No. America will be over. The country, like physically, the country will be here. But the American idea, the American ideal will be gone. But I do have good news. I, like I think mm-hmm. from 5 till 7 every day, <laughs> you, uh, at least on weekdays, you should listen to What's Left After 7 O'Clock with Patty Vasquez. Because let me tell you something. This is the greatest show on CPT hey. that does not run from 8 till 11, okay, in the morning. You guys should definitely listen to this show and not some other channel. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, love you all. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Oh, God, no. Matt in Chicago to take care of my friend. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I, I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling so. I, I, maybe solid. Is solid a good way to, to put it? Seven seven three seven six three nine two seven eight. Give me a call and uh, let me know uh, if you have voted and what your voting experience was like. Uh, throughout the country, they are finding that there are instances of voter intimidation, folks electioneering, meaning they are wearing campaign material. I haven't heard any stories about Democrats uh, causing a scene. Uh, I think that uh, f- look, I'm not going to generalize, but so far, this dude with a machine. Jetty down in Florida. This woman with a Trump shirt threw a hissy fit and took her shirt off and acted like it was embarrassing and she had to vote in her bra, which she could have just gone to the restroom and turned her shirt inside out. If I do that, if I walk into a spot, I, mean, I think in years past, I have walked in with a button or a shirt or something and I've been told I need to cover it off or remove it. And you just go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. that the response to someone telling you that you cannot wear election or campaign items in the vote polling place is to go, oh, I, if, you, if you didn't know, just you didn't know. You don't have to be just a jackhole about it because it, w- these folks act as though they are being singled out. It's everyone. In the state of Illinois, it is illegal to, to electioneer in a, a, inside the designated area. So they measure from the doors of the polling place. They put out blue cones. That's why you'll have folks handing you cards. And another thing, when you go to your polling place, please, for the love of God, be patient with the folks out there who are handing you the postcards, the information about candidates, a lot of people don't do all their research. They're there for those folks who maybe haven't given much thought to their county board camp races, to their judicial races, to uh, even state legislators or school boards. Um, and a lot of those folks are friends and family of candidates who are so invested and love their family member or friend so much that they are out there trying to help get their name out there to educate you on somebody that you maybe hadn't done some research, ask them. Ask them why they're helping out this candidate. A woman asked me the other day why I was out campaigning with Kate Doyle. And I told her, like, of all the candidates in that school district, I felt that Kate Doyle demonstrated the most investment into special needs education. And I, as a parent of a child who has severe disabilities and have gone through CPS for the last 16 years, I know that I want someone in those rooms on that board who is there with a sense of urgency like they're their hair is on fire for individuals who need it the most. And and I'll tell you something. Like, I, when she asked me why I, I was supporting Kate Doyle, that was I, I, it, it took me a moment because I just, I haven't, I've been door knocking, right? I've been going to people instead of people coming to me. And I really appreciated that she asked and, and I got to formulate and articulate why it was I was out there for her. So, and look, I think the... Um, the the fact that that uh, if he, folks are out there, I know some of them are paid, and you're annoyed by them. Just 
just try to take a deep breath. If you don't want to talk to them, if you don't want the campaign material, just say no thank you, or I already voted, or I have the information I need. You don't have to be just a jerk about things. I had this guy yelling at me at Wells Park, and I forgot. I was I, t- I was thinking about this later. I'm like, I would rather go door knocking. Any, d- I would rather drive back and forth from Wisconsin than stand in front of a polling place. But when you believe in a candidate, th- then you will do whatever it takes to help them out. I remember when I worked for, I was volunteering for uh, Judge Chris Kennedy because he has a I, look. I look for folks who understand what our challenges are in my family. And Judge Kennedy has an adult daughter, very much like mine, who has a, a, a physical and uh, intellectual disabilities. And uh, and I wanted somebody in a position that knows those stories, that has those experiences. So that's why I volunteer for candidates uh, up and down the ticket for whether it's for judicial races, county board races, school board races. As they say, uh, in I think it's in. Kane County from the White House to the courthouse. Be informed and uh, and get out there and vote, folks. Uh, let's see. The 630 says, I voted in DuPage and out in Naperville City Hall. No wait. Love your show. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate our Teamsters listening to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. The 773. Uh, let's see what this beautiful. Oh, that's the sky. That's a gorgeous photo. Is that what it looks like out there right now? Good golly, what a beautiful Halloween evening. Thank you for that photo from the, the 773. And um, I want to thank everybody. Oh, uh, our friend Larry in Wheeling said, I, I yesterday texted and bragged to Joe Desposito about you on your door knocking in Wisconsin. I referred to you, your fibs for Kamala, and she asked me what fibs is. I told her with a few asterisks. I think she is somewhat. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll fill in Joan. Fibs for Wisconsin is my little group of door knockers. Uh, not just my group, but any Illinoisan that goes up and door knocks in Wisconsin. I'm pr- providing them with a fun little button designed by Hairbrained Designs. Uh, they do those great shirts, the STFU about Chicago. You, you're not even from here. And they uh, they really came up with a cute design. It's Illinois, a little, you know, Illinois and Wisconsin holding hands as uh, we try to turn uh, Wisconsin blue. Fibs uh, refers to uh, the term of endearment that Wisconsinites use to describe their, uh, their us or their neighbors to the south because they they have some opinions about our driving and our uh, bear, bear appreciate the bears essentially. Uh, so they call us effing Illinois bastards is what they calls effing Illinois bastards, what FIBS stands for. So if Joan's listening, uh, yes, that's my that's my little group of door knockers. And I know somebody else, uh, the FIBS for Kamala. Um, but yeah, it works with Wisconsin because they specifically uh, call us FIBS. I had someone from Michigan uh, door knocking, so they also call us FIBS. And I, I think that that's, I, I think they can use that for Indiana. I love you, Bob. Let's take a quick break here and take your calls when we come back on WCPT 820, Heartland Signal and KTNF AM 950, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Alexa, play WCPT. WCPT from TuneIn. Hey there, it's your guy Warren Price from European and U.S. Collision Repair, a division of Technocraft Body Shops. We specialize in automobile and truck repair as well as normal automobile maintenance. With our highly skilled technicians and environmentally friendly materials, we strive for quality. Call 773-248-1200. That's 773-248-1200 or europeanus.com. Patty Vasquez is taking your calls now at 773-763-9278. Driving it home with Patty Vasquez now on WCPT 820. Thank you so much for joining us as we continue to drive it home. I know there's a lot going on. I haven't even really been paying attention to news today, although I did, of course, watch what was uh, going on last night at uh, Trump's rally where he wore a... Uh, a hazard, like a you know, one of those work vests, because he was in a garbage truck. What what, what is even happening? At any rate, we are taking your calls and your texts at seven seven three seven six three nine two seven eight. And coming up in a few moments, we will check in with Matt McNeil, the host of the Matt McNeil Show, broadcast here on WCPT Monday through Friday at nine p.m. Of course, the host of his own show on KTNF. Let's check in with our friend George on the South Side. George, what's on your mind, my friend? Well, a lot of things, um, and uh, the first one is that our neighbors to the north may take some delight in calling us FIPs, but they never turn our money down. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> um, and we do spend a lot up there. So many, so many Illinois people have either vacation homes mm-hmm. or have retired up to Wisconsin, and they're spending their 
Social Security and their their pensions and their IRAs and 401ks up there. Uh, but that is not the kind of thing that dissuades mean-spirited people, but they'll keep the money. Yeah, I know. Uh, and the other hand, we refer to them as cheeseheads, cheese heads. which is well-deserved, but they actually take perverse pride in that nickname and wear, and wear foam rubber blocks of cheese on their head. I mean, okay, well, hard to take people like that seriously. But um, what I really wanted to talk about was to ask your opinion, your feeling about um. something, but the horrendous remarks made not only by that unknown comedian. Oh, yeah. Uh, and even though he allegedly targeted them specifically at Puerto Ricans, I, th- I think he was probably speaking about anybody who's mm-hmm. Hispanic, mm-hmm. Latino, Latinx, or Latina. Mm-hmm. And in, sp- in particular, the remark he made after the floating island of garbage remark, where he talked about how open Latina women are to producing babies. Oh, I don't know. If- that was so gross. I mean, like, so I'm asking oh, you. I know you. I know you're yeah. not. I know you're not of Puerto Rican ancestry. You're of Mexican. But he was talking about you. Yep. And I'm I'm only Polish and Russian in ancestry. But when I heard that, I was just out of my mind angry. It's like, you know, haven't we gotten beyond this stuff? Obviously not. But I would just wonder what your feeling and your reaction and your thoughts were about that. You know, the the same thing I felt like the morning after uh, Governor Walls gave his speech to the DNC and everyone was making fun of Gus. Like, I, I for, some, for whatever reason, like, I, I guess I'm kind of used to it uh, with, you know, folks kind of being mean-spirited. And also 30 years in comedy. You know, you should see the comedy world. I was actually just looking at uh, a comedian that I kind of like, and you know, a lot of comics are saying, well, what did you expect? He's a roast comic. Here, I'm going to read, and Lady B, I, I don't, I'm going to have to use the language because I think it's so disgusting. Um, but this is from Tony Hinchcliffe, the comedian we're talking about. This is a joke he wrote previously. I bet the best, I don't even know if I should use it. That's the R word. Uh, so he says, the, I mean, it, having to buy it Christmas gifts. Do they know it's Christmas? Nope. So, you know, that, like, that they would hire him, that Donald Trump has already expressed that our children are disposable. Like, this guy is such garbage. He's a soulless ghoul that I really, and I apologize to anybody that, I mean, I hate using that word, but, like, whenever I say the R word, people are like, what does that mean? Uh, I use it because that word, for some reason, has become hip again amongst the kids. And it's, it's, it's just so dismissive and, uh, and, you know, purposely hurtful. Um, so at any rate, you know what, for me, I, I was trying to uh, explain this to somebody. It's not like being offended. It's being disappointed in my in my heart that people want to be mean, that they think it's funny to poke fun or to diminish and marginalize people. I guess it's more that. I mean, like offended is like, oh, that hurt my feelings, I guess. But for me, I'm like, oh, you're disgusting. And thank you for telling me who you are. That's a that's a good thing. I'm going to file that away and keep it. Yeah, that that that's useful. Yeah, because the, uh, the other no before before we move off of this real quick too. You know, I've been doing comedy since night the sum, the, since the summer my brother's murderer was executed. John Wayne Gacy was executed the summer I started, and I have to tell you, uh, nobody knew. I didn't tell anyone until a few years ago, like 2019. I came out with uh, you know trying to share my story because I was running for office, and Lindsay Lapointe and Robert Martwick were cruelly trying to use my name and alluding to elements of my background uh, to just be harmful and hurtful. But in 30 years of comedy, I, I never told any comics, including the summer that I started when they would make like these just hor- horrible jokes about gay people and the, the boys that Gacy killed, including my brother. I never told a single... Com- I never directly told a comic, you shouldn't do that, I'm offended or I'm hurt or any of that stuff. But I would check it away as like my... I, I just would not d- associate with those folks because it just was it was gruesome and horrifying but i i never told them what they could or couldn't do so to all the comics who are having arguments about well tony Hinkliffe, you know it's just who he is yeah he's despicable that's who he is and so now i know and now we all know and i don't yep. know if you heard this or not but um the, i guess it was the night or two before he appeared at madison square garden he uh, was appearing at a local comedy club, and he did exactly the same routine to test it out and got a very 
yeah. cool response from the audience. And then when he was done and could see that they weren't all yucking it up, he said, well, I expect to get a much better response tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, he got a bunch of maggots in there. Yep. But um, um, I hope I hope after all these years of long last that you're brother is resting in peace. I appreciate um, that. And I, and I actually, um, someone just reached out to me. Uh, I, I had, a, I, I, I'm somehow learning, um, now, you know, more than 40 years later, uh, that my brother, what my brother was, um, had his way, you know, was had a charm with the ladies. I've heard from two of his ex-girlfriends families and it's been really sweet. And I hope someday to tell their, their stories and their memories of him. I'm going to meet with one of the, his ex-girlfriends in a few weeks. Um, and someone I, um, someone that I work with, reached out to me and said that his sister sadly uh, had passed away but she said as, like in her they never knew they didn't know till 1978 she died before they found him in, in, in the crawl space um, as she was dying she said she could see Mike and that, that the fan I mean like what a wild and, and you know it might be what she wanted as she was you know because she had uh, I believe leukemia um, just a really sweet thing that, uh, that the folks have been sharing pieces of my brother uh, over the last few years so I appreciate yeah, that. That is really sweet. And, and you know what? Um, you just said something that made me realize not to have preconceived notions. I mean, I just assumed because of the kind of guy Gacy was that he abducted and and killed uh, exclusively gay young men. But obviously your brother was not. Well, and, I don't, you know, it's something that I don't, I don't, uh, I know that the story was that because my, my uh, one of his friends told me that he did partake in uh, some party drugs and hallucinogenics. Like they were in the car one day and my brother said, Hey, I, I, I dropped some acid. And his friend was like, are you going to, you think you're going to be okay? He's like, no, I mean, I dropped it in the car. I can't find it. It's like the size of a paint chip. <laughs> I mean, what a great story to learn about my brother, you know? Um, so I think because of what Gacy did was also not just, uh, you know, with gay young men or with uh, with male prostitutes, but also he would entice uh, young men with getting high. And we think that my brother might have worked for him. He was looking for work and he would, did construction. And one of Mike's friends said that he was trying to get a ride up to basically the area where Gacy was doing work. And uh, so I, that's actually how I, I connected with a lot of Mike's friends and one of whom it turned out was already a fan of mine not knowing that I was Mike's little sister so um, I got a lot of stories from then sadly uh, Greg uh, one of Mike's friends just passed away a couple years ago so I'm trying to connect with as many people who knew him as possible and they all have just the best stories about my brother one I'll tell you one more so the night after uh, we came out with the story Chicago Magazine ran a piece and this guy came to a comedy show at Joe's on Weed Street and he it was he came right he's like I've been he goes I, I've been waiting all night to talk to you and they'd gone to Luther North together, and he said that my brother had gotten into a tussle in the hallways with a wrestler or somebody, some athlete, a jock, right? My brother was kind of a stoner, clearly, and, um, and apparently the, the ritual at Luther North was they would all walk. They would, like, basically we're going to have a fight, and everyone would, like, just follow you to the to Portage Park to fight it out, and uh, and he said your brother was one tough son of a bitch, so it was really it was really great to get that kind of a story from about my brother. Oh, I'm glad I had a chance to hear it, too. Uh, one more quick thing I'd like to get to. Um, I've been watching and listening and reading as closely as I can to how the uh, onrushing election day uh, is is going to is going to you know sort out. And over the last two, three, four weeks, I very, very slowly started to get more and more optimistic. Not hugely so, because I've thought all along that what um, Vice President Harris has been saying is that we're the underdogs and it's going to be close, but we're going to win. And I have always agreed with that. But going by the people I see on TV and, and listen to on the radio, you can tell, particularly the MSNBC folks, uh, their body language mm-hmm. and their facial expressions and the way they talk, that the optimism level is rising. It's mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And they, they, you can tell from time to time they feel emboldened to be a little bit humorous about the situation. And today, former uh, Republican Florida Congressman David Jolly was on, and I've always listened closely to him because he's always seemed very astute to me. And he was barely controlling his glee about how much he thinks Trump has screwed the pooch the last few days, how he is wasting a day today by going to states that he has no chance in. 
and that he you could just tell that he, he I forget his phrasing, but he said that he's more and more sure that the result is going to be what what we're hoping for on Tuesday. <sighs> I just and, really, I, and I agree I, with that. Folks, I, I think it's the <laughs> deepest breath I've taken all day, even though I meditate every morning. Um, just hearing that makes my my chest uh, sort of relax a little bit. So thank you for uh, well, sharing Well, and that. actually, when I, when I told that to Lady B, she had a similar reaction. So I'm <laughs> glad I made two, two lovely, attractive, intelligent oh. women happy today. Yes, and, thank and you. And one more, one more last thing. I uh-huh. know you've got other things to go to. But uh, when you were talking about your campaign and how your opponents were um, criticizing your background and whatever happened when you were younger and everything. I'm going to say this, and excuse me for being a, a guy and maybe a little sexist, but I'll bet you that if you had pictures of how they looked in a swimsuit when they were young and how you looked as a lifeguard, <laughs> you would win hands down. My lovely lady. Well, that's very kind of you. I wish that when I was a lifeguard that I appreciated how I looked because, uh, uh, yeah, looking back, I'm like, man, why was I so mad at my body? That was, I was I, you know, that's so thank you for that. I appreciate it, George. You have a good evening. Happy Halloween. And yeah, you too. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Happy Halloween. Thank you. John in Hammond, Indiana. How you doing, my friend? Hi, hi Patty. Hey. How you doing? I'm on outside uh, in the wind. Yeah, it's gusty and, uh, out there. Be careful. It is. It really is. Hey, a uh, couple things I just wanted to get off my chest. Uh, one, the whole thing about the garbage, the floating garbage. Yeah. Uh, to me, as an environmentalist, there is a crisis yeah. uh, with floating garbage. We, the, the Pacific Ocean has giant garbage islands floating around. Uh, they're in the doldrums. They're in the, where the uh, the ocean currents, uh, they form giant circles. Yep. And the garbage kind of piles up in the middle. So you'll have remote islands, like on the chain that just goes, uh, you know, 800, 1,000 miles west of Hawaii. And the most remote islands, there are piles of garbage out there, plastics. Mm-hmm. And so there is a crisis of floating garbage, okay? But not one damn Republican or one damn Democrat would even say something like I just said. Why do I have to say that? That It just irks me because that should be a priority. Without the ocean, we're all going to die, okay? Yep. That, is a, that is sustaining us. That's where, you know, not, the, not just the fish, but it's, it's where, you know, if that plastic gets in the water, it... it Listen, these plastics are, uh, you, you've heard about these forever chemicals. They're all based on plastics. And they're getting in uh, right. our bloodstream. Yep. They're getting in, uh, in the food sources and everywhere, you know. So anyway, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, uh, I don't know if I could do this. These cell phones are pretty good. But uh, can you still hear me? I, gotta I can. My, uh, yes. Turn my, I got my you. music down here. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I got a radio on here, but uh, I got a I got an email from the Harris Walt campaign, and uh, it uh, it 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 goes as follows. Hang on. Uh, so it says uh, Harris Walt is from uh, uh, I guess it's from Mr. Uh, Governor Walt. It says it turns out if we just hold a line in states where polls say we are tied or have an, have the advantage, we will elect Kamala Harris as our next president. Well, that's great. But uh, he also says, uh, if you look at the um, the uh, uh, electoral votes, it is extremely close, and, and it, in some cases, it's favoring Trump. Ew. Okay, that's the disturbing thing. Right. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of emails from those folks, and the thing about it is, it's like, look, okay, you know, America is all about commerce, you know? <laughs> And oh, you and I have been exposed to more commercials and more sales pitches than, you know, than anybody in the world. This is, this is the way it is in America, right? See, here's the thing, Patty. You can't advertise by saying, you know, we're not the competition. You have to advertise by showing what you are and what are you, what's your strength. What are you doing different from everybody yes. else? What, what, right. That, and that is where, in, in my opinion, we, we progressives... We all know about Trump. Yep. We all know about him. We don't need to, I don't need to hear anything about that idiot. Right. Okay? What, what I really want to hear is, what is Kamala going to do for us? Kamala. What, what? <laughs> I know. Kamala. Okay. 
I think Come I think on. I think Excuse she's doing a, I think she's doing a really solid job of, of getting that message out. I, I have to run because I've got Dan uh, I've got Matt McNeil okay. on the line. But uh, if you want to hold on, I can come back to you because Matt's no, going to be on for okay. a little bit. All right, but I just I wanted to make that point. That's all. Oh, thank you, John. I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, joining us is Matt McNeil, the host of the Matt McNeil Show. I, I'm sorry, I'm off tomorrow, so I might have not communicated well. Uh, but Matt joins us uh, from KTNF AM 950. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm 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 amped. I was door knocking today. I've been phone banking, uh, just doing all the stuff I possibly can. Well, how are your How are your listeners uh, feeling today? Well, I mean, of course, you and I know this. You know, you're in Illinois. I'm in Minnesota. It's a general positive feeling going on here. It's funny because the local Republicans up here are grasping onto like Rasmussen polls that are, you know, Rasmussen is not even ranked. It's their bad. Uh, they, you know, they're grabbing onto that and trying to act like, oh, see, we're staying close and all this. You know, we just had a poll out that said Kamala is ahead by 10 points in Minnesota. I think that that's pretty close to being accurate. I don't think that there's much that that would that that seems to be pretty close to where I think things are. Um, and and so it, it, for us, it's 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 pretty good. I, I mean, I, about the most most toxic local thing here is is whether or not the Republicans would pick up the Minnesota House, or I don't think they will. That said, though, I, I think that you, you kind of, as you look around, I, I feel pretty positive that things are looking pretty good for Election Day right now. Especially, like I said, it's, it's not sometimes, it's not the election stuff, it's what they're saying. And I keep hearing a lot from the Republicans talking about, you know, just, you know, this mentality of we've already it, it, their mentality seems to be they're already anticipating losing, and and I think that that's it. that's not a that's not a front. That's I, I think they know that they're going to lose. Yeah, I I think you're well, and they're already you know saying out loud how they're going to steal it or, or try to like you know connive their way to get it you know to to be in a position with Speaker Johnson and the courts and tying everything up and, and you know and when you cast aspersions and suspicion, uh, you're also you know point, putting a target on a lot of people's backs. It's one of the things I do think about when I'm door knocking and I and I, it was funny we had Ellen Holly who's the chair of the uh, Walworth or the chair emeritus the Walworth Dems about you know she tells her family here. Here's the information for my life insurance in case anything happens to me. And I try not to think about that, but it's in the, you know, there are certain houses you approach and you think, you know, because they've been lied to, how deeply do they, like, there are certain doors, if I see, you know, alarm bells, the things that would set up, set off an alarm bell, like, uh, you know, symbols of guns and, uh, you know, ring my bell. I have a, I have a silent uh, burglary. Uh, there was a, a gun sign as a warning today. And we were like, okay, we're just wow. going to drop the lid. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it, you know, I, I think they are going to try this. You gotta, you gotta, gotta be careful about this stuff. But I, I mean, I, you know, you and I chatted a little earlier today. One of the things I kind of think about is what is the number that it becomes that they can play all these freaking legal games all day long, but it becomes too much of a gap for them to cover. They were, it's, it's requiring them to overturn too many states. And I, and I think you know, we talked about is it three hundred five? Is it because what was it? Biden was what three hundred two. Wasn't he? Biden, didn't Joe Biden get three hundred two? I think that's right. When I was, that's what you were asking me yeah. today. Like, what, what's my number? And I think once we cross three hundred, you know. But to your point, I mean, yeah, they still like tied up the courts and refused to accept uh, all the judges telling them that they didn't have basis, they didn't have evidence, they didn't, and kept throwing them out. It didn't matter. And yep, we, exactly. here we are. Here yeah. we are, four years later, still having the argument that they lost, lost. Oh, God. <laughs> well, and, and and I think that. It, of course, this is going to. This is the only way it's going to go. I mean, everything about this party right now. I mean, I don't know if you saw today all the far right wing polls that they have released to basically flood the market. Yeah. Uh, with with these with these fraudulent polls, and I said, you know, think about this. They're doing this just to appease one man, one guy. They are just doing this to make yeah. Trump feel better. And it's the saddest thing. I mean, the Republican Party, if it even survives this, I will be shocked. I will be shocked. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, I, well, and that's the thing is that um, there was an editorial piece today by somebody who basically said, you know, we 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 can't understand why it's so close. Like a lot of Democrats are like, I can't understand how it's so close. And, you know, basically the the uh, basis of it is that the, because there are people who don't who do believe in equality, but only for white people and for Christians, they believe in freedoms for white people and for Christians. And there's enough of those folks. And now we 
we know. We've, you know, basically Trump becoming the head of the party, becoming the party of Trump has exposed just how vulnerable our democracy is. And people like me, I, I didn't go and work this hard for Obama. I didn't work this hard for Hillary Clinton. And, you know, the, I, I'm going to stay engaged now uh, for the rest of my life. And I think a lot of folks need to be vigilant and aware and we need to you know protect our, our democracy from here on in. Now we know. Now we know the threat. They've exposed themselves and shown their whole well, and, asses. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> when, when, well, when they when they put on three Supreme Court justices, I said, it's going to take 20 years for us to undo this. Yes. And yeah. you know as well as I do that you know, Alito and Thomas are not going to, if, when Harris wins on Tuesday, they're going to dig their heels in four more years. She wins re-election, they'll dig their heels in four more years. I mean, they'll be like that elderly woman in the wheelchair yep. from the SpongeBob cartoon. You know, it's just, yep. it's like, ah, it's, it's, that's what they're going to be. But, you know, this, this is just, it's, it's, they are, they're, they're sore losers. I mean, there was a, yep. a Daily Show this week. There was a woman that was basically saying, you know, she, she was looking at him, and you could just tell her thing was, I hope he doesn't get rid of Social Security because I need Social Security, but my racism means that much more to me. Yeah. And, you know, you just can't help these people. It's like, <laughs> you know, I, you don't want to – if that's your most important thing, I get why you vote for Trump if you're a racist. If racism is your biggest thing, I get that. Like selfish billionaires, I get why you support Trump. It's just, you know, I, the, the rest of them, you know, I'll never let you forget that you supported a guy who loves Hitler. You supported a guy, you voted for a man who loves Hitler. And there is no, that's like liking a guy that he, that hung around with Jeffrey Epstein. Oh yeah, he did that too. You guys will not be able to wash the stink off you. I will never allow you guys to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. We we know who what they're capable of, what they're willing to do, and at what expense. And uh, yeah, it's just wild. Are you you have plans for this evening? Because I know that uh, Lady B said that we could keep you for a short segment. What do you have going on tonight? Plans with the family? Oh, trick or treating! Go uh, take care of your trick or treaters. Well, I got I got the candy cannon ready to go. All right, <laughs> like, all right, get back to it, I my friend. Alrighty. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> you can hear Dan. Uh, now is my segment in your show tonight, <laughs> which would be so funny. It's yeah, 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 you guys, you guys are in my show tonight uh, in the nine o'clock hour. Patty on the road from Wisconsin, and yeah, we had a nice little chat about her experiences door knocking there. So. Yep, exactly. Well, it's always great to catch up with you, and I look forward to uh, sort of going over the, you know, the the results. I think we, we're going to try to check in with you possibly on election night. Do you would that would that work for you? I might be able to pull that off. I'll oh, let you know. Excellent, my friend. All right. Well, either way, we'll talk to you. We'll catch up with you next week. Uh, happy Halloween and uh, enjoy your evening. And let's get this done. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful, safe night. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Matt. That's Matt McNeil, the host of the Matt McNeil Show on KTNF AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Let's take a break here and I'll take your phone calls and uh, texts and I'll, I'll try to catch up with how behind I am. Chicago's Progressive Talk, WCPT 820, where facts matter. There's nothing more refreshing after a few hours of door knocking for my favorite progressive candidate than an ice cold Biden beer or Tammy Shandy. You can now find all the tasty progressive beers of the Naka Brewing Company throughout the Chicagoland area at wonderful partners like Lions Beverage Express in Schaumburg, Foremost Liquors and Displays, Eastside Cafe Coffee and Wine Bar in East Dundee, and Rand's Liquors on Clark in Chicago. Don't forget to drink and vote responsibly. Did you know you can get your prescriptions for less at your local pharmacy? You can with GoodRx. It's the free app that can save you money on your medications. Just search for your prescription, choose the pharmacy and the price that works best for you, and then show your GoodRx coupon to your pharmacist at the drop-off counter. GoodRx works at over 70,000 pharmacies, including Walmart, Rite Aid, and Walgreens, and it works whether you have insurance or not. It's easy to save. Next time you drop off your prescription, check GoodRx. To start saving today, go to GoodRx.com. GoodRx is not insurance. Hey there, it's your guy Warren Price from European and U.S. Collision Repair, a division of Technicraft Body Shops. We specialize in automobile and truck repair as well as normal automobile maintenance. With our highly skilled technicians and environmentally friendly materials, we strive for quality. Call 773-248-1200, that's 773-248-1200 or europeanus.com. Patty Vasquez is taking your calls now at 773-763-9278. Driving it home with Patty Vasquez now on WCPT 820. Just a uh, quick... <laughs> Matt McNeil was like, did we... Were we supposed to talk today? I was like, I... I 
Maybe not. I am so tired. I'll be honest with you. I'm a little, I'm a little bit like I, I keep starting the same story with Adam because we've been in the car so much the last few like since August and all the towns are blending together all by store. I'm like, I can't remember who was there with like between Dan Katowski, Rebecca Weinberg, Elliot Serrano uh, and tomorrow meeting some other folks in Kenosha. So please, uh, folks, if you want to uh, volunteer this weekend, go to wisdoms.org and Operation Swing State. Someone Debbie just uh, reached out to me and I might be uh, collaborating with them this weekend. So uh, go to Operation Swing State's website and Facebook page and find out where they're headed this weekend. I know they have folks going to Holland, Michigan, and they're ho- providing transportation and hotel. I can't do that. All I have are buttons. I have uh, fibs for Wisconsin buttons, so you can get one of those. Dennis is calling from Lakeview. Hey, Dennis, what's on your mind, my friend? Oh, hi, Patty. Uh, first time caller, you know. Hey, thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, it's great listening to you. I've been, uh, well, since you started, yeah, I've been listening to you. Um, yeah, I live in the Lakeview area, and I've got a little business uh, where I evaluate and train persons with disabilities. Oh, you do? Um, How fantastic. Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, I've been doing that on my own for about 23 years, um, but about 30, 32 years overall. What? Uh, what's yeah. the name of your business? So we can uh, spread the joy um, and, and the love. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Mo- Mobile Advantage Driving School. Mobile. Yes, I'm over by. I'm sorry. Go Mobile Advantage Driving School. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. I'm over by Foster and uh, uh, just uh, west of uh, Kimball. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, I have a little. I have, you know, I have a contract with one of the hospitals, and uh, anybody who has uh, special needs. Uh, they come through and they're uh, evaluated by uh, an occupational therapist, and uh, then I take them out on the road. And you know. I love that. So you, so it's a, it's a general driving school. You also provide programs for individuals who need a little extra sort of guidance on how to, you know, work a car and, and make it through, get their driver's license. It's fantastic, right? Well, yes, yes, and you know, and there's a uh, there's a lot of individuals who have uh, needs. You know, they, they might have Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. So, okay. I make sure that they they are capable of driving on the road or not. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, I d- it's I do- really. Um, it, it sounds great. I, I do have a question. Uh, let's say you have an adult child without a disability who still doesn't have a driver's license. Uh, are you getting a lot of young people who, because of the pandemic, were not able to complete their driver's education? Uh, yes, but uh, I've been mostly focusing on uh, individuals with uh, disabilities. You know, and they're okay. mostly adults that come through. Uh huh. But I work with everyone. Yes. Uh, and what's the website for folks who want to find out more or phone number? Oh, okay. My, well, I don't have that set up right now because um, my wife is handling that 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 part right now. Okay. So, but it's it's with a contract with the uh, the hospitals. You said for an evaluation, right? Uh, uh yes, yes. Uh huh. Excellent. Yes, um, so Mobile yeah, Advantage Driving been, School, folks, if you know somebody with a disability, let them know to, to, to talk to their medical provider uh, to find places like a Dennis's a driving school. Yeah, yes. And I was, I was uh, telling Lady B that, you know, I don't, I don't call the Republican Party the Republican Party. I call them the trump Putinkins Party. <laughs> Putinkins, yep. <laughs> yeah, well, I've met enough yeah. of them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So how was voting um, for you? You voted early? Uh, yes. Oh, well, a couple of days ago, I just dropped it off at the Merlot Library. Uh-huh. Uh, my, yeah, my, my wife and myself, yes, uh, just dropped it off in the box, the blue box. Excellent. It feels oh, good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I can talk to, you know, to, uh, <laughs> it's really funny because um, one of my nephews called up, and I am Latino. Um, I was, you know, I was uh, born in Colombia, but I was raised here in Chicago, Um so my nephew called me and he was telling me he was going to vote for Trump, you know, and, and he's 40 years old. But And I go, I, what are you talking about? You know, and I let him know everything that I've heard about Trump and and, let, and I let him know that those are facts. Mm-hmm. And he sent, he sent me something on TikTok that, uh, uh, about how great Trump is and whatever, whatever. But I let him know that, listen, you're willing to vote for this man who, who would probably put your kids in a cage, you know, yeah. or get you kicked out of this country. And mm-hmm. you're willing to, to do that. And then he's an adjudicated uh, uh, rapist, you know. Right. And he kind of like just, he shut down a little bit, but he he's the type that's like a caveman. You know, <laughs> you know my, my uh, the rest of the family, you know, they're uh, pretty well educated and 
they're all voting for Trump. Wow. You know, but he's the type of, yeah, he's, he thinks he's real macho and all that stuff, you know? Well, so, I find that I, the people I know that are voting for Trump seem to be more self-preservationists than they are community, uh, you know, helpers, essentially. You know, they're the kind of people who, like, see what's what's in it for me. And I just don't have, I, I mean, I, it's not how I operate. Like, I even, like, when I used to work in sales, like, I hated trying to, like, basically push people to buy things and spend their money. I was never a good salesperson. Be, and I worked on commission, and I just, I was like, nah, I don't really know if you need this, you know, satellite service or whatever. But I, I find yeah. that it, it's my friends who are self-preservationists or see other, you know, other Americans as a, or other human beings as a, as a threat to their business, to their their way of life, uh, and even things that don't have anything to do with them, whether it's abortion or LGBTQ rights or, I mean, you know, people need just needing basic care, and it, it bothers them or not believing in Jesus. Like, I, I what, what, you know, well, how does that affect you? Your your relationship with with God is your relationship. Everybody has the right to worship the way they want or not. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, my and my dad grew up. Uh, well, he actually studied to be a priest. Oh wow! Uh, but uh, then when he, he and this was in Colombia, they had a church ready for him. That's how far along he was. Oh my gosh! But, uh, he, yeah, but he fell in love with my mom, and he mm-hmm. went to them, and he actually he actually told them that uh, what do I do? And they actually wanted him to just get rid of her. So then he, he told them, you just answered my question, whether I should stay or go. That was it. You know, he left. Mm-hmm. You know, he stayed married with my mom for 52 years. Yeah. Wow. That's so wild. Like that. Aww. I love that. I love that so much. Well, thank you for sharing, Dennis. And thank you for telling us about your driving school. Look forward to talking to you okay. again. Don't let, it's the first time. Don't let it be the last time, okay? Okay, thank you, Patty. Thank okay, you. take care. Happy, Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And Paul in Seattle, the host of Kitchen Table Progressives on Sunday nights at six o'clock, where you are the stars of the show. How are you doing, Paul? Yeah, I was listening to your conversation with Matt, and he makes a point about people who think it's racism is more important than their best interests. And I'm thinking about a couple of things. First of all, Isabella Wilkerson, who wrote Cast, makes that very point that poor white people think it's better to preserve their entitlement as a white person, uh, at least they're above blacks. Oh. She makes that point in that book. Mm-hmm. And frankly, in 2012, Nancy Pelosi's daughter, Alexis, who's a documentary maker, went down to Mississippi, and she was interviewing people, and this one guy, mid-50s, he looked every minute of it, too. Uh, not a good-looking mid-50s. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, well, Mississippi is last in education, last in economics, last in pretty much everything. So Republican politics really haven't worked out for you down here, have they? And this guy said, well, no, no, they haven't. But we'd rather die than give up our beliefs. And I thought, yep. you know, don't let me stop you there, buddy, but uh, it's, it's obviously not helping you. And by the way, J.D. Vance made the same point in his book. Billy Elegy is that yeah. the people that he supposedly came from, that culture, the Billy culture, are p- people who would, well, they claim to be good church going Christians, but he says this, he says, but they're not. Hardly any of them go to church because they're all too damn hungover on Sunday morning. <laughs> That's what he said in his book. Wow. And But at least they are, they feel it, that that they're better off preserving their white entitlement somehow licking the boots of the rich mm-hmm. is better for them than, uh, you know, trying to bring up all people, the, the quality of life for all people who are poor. It's just they want it their way. Right. And they don't care about anybody. And you know what? The, the survivalist, my brother is kind of one of these, although he has plenty of money. Um, yeah, he buys gold and oh, I'll tell you what, when the economy finally crashes, I said, Hey buddy, bro, when the economy crashes, gold isn't gonna do you any good. You are in the society right now that you you got a lot more things to worry about because we're we're a societal being. Like E. E. Cummings said, you can't live your own life. You have to live in a society. These people think that they're gonna be survivalists when everything goes down. Uh if if that's gonna happen you got a lot bigger problems. And I was talking to a guy from Kosovo one time, a few years ago. He said, 
These people who think they want a civil war don't know <laughs> what they're talking about. You want yeah. to see inflation that ends twelve years? You're going to have inflation of 5,000% and right. things that you won't be able to buy at all. Yeah. So don't, don't be wishing for a civil war to put your thumb in the eye of the left wing. You know? yeah, yeah, look, being disruptive, being violent isn't the, the whole kit and caboodle of winning a war. I, you know, look, we can go on and on exactly. about. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it also that gives me some peace is that, you know, Joe Biden on November 6th will still be the president of the United States and has within his resources to settle, you know, settle whatever it needs to be settled. I, you know, these folks are like, I want to keep my gun in case the government comes for me. Well, don't give them a reason to come for you. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it, yeah. And don't think that your gun is going to keep the government right. from coming for you. If they want to come from you, the, believe me, if you think you're, we've been spending almost a trillion dollars a year on the supposedly the biggest military and Donald Trump wants to stick it on you. So what are you talking about? We're going yeah. to have the military uh, after the uh, the enemy within. How do you know that he's not going to decide that at some point you are the enemy within? Because he doesn't have any respect for anybody. He doesn't have any, re- and I don't know why they don't know this, but Donald Trump has no respect for anybody. The other thing is you're talking about Trump, uh, it was all stolen. And the whole thing is, remember, the Constitution says that you don't have what happens at the state level if there's fraud or whatever? That's up for the state to sort yep. out, and that is to they don't I, do redos of elections. That's just how the state legislatures. Yep, your right to vote for president in your state is is a right that the state legislature gave you because that's how they have decided in all the states yep. since 1880 to yep. select I, the electors, the real electors. Yep, I've I've got to run. It's time to turn the station over. Thank you so much, Paul. On Sunday night, six o'clock with Paul in the kitchen table. Progressive. Thank you, Lady B. Happy Halloween, everybody. And uh, Randy Rhodes is up next, followed by Matt McNeil.